Hey everybody, welcome back. It's your girl here, Rain. It's Anointed to Bling, and I'm back with another installment to my wedding vlog series. I am still working on beautiful vases. These are for some floating candles that are going to sit inside of a flower arrangement. And if you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. If you're not and you always tune in, I appreciate you. Thank you for coming back and visiting me because today I'm going to show you how I took these drab, dusty, dirty vases that have been sitting under my windowsill for over a year and turn them into these beautiful, magnificent vases that are stunningly brooched. And if you wanna see how I did it, stay tuned because you know what's coming up right now. Okay, let's talk supplies like we always do. So I got these vases from the Dollar Tree. They're a little dirty because they've been sitting under my windowsill in a box collecting dust for about a year now. So I'm really sorry. I'm going to clean these up um, before we start on this project. But I got these at the Dollar Tree. You can find different um, different uh, sizes and also widths, different places. Your flea market is another good place for that, all right? So we made a trip down to LA because I had been hearing about some of these famous bead and trim places. If you follow Amber Shoal or some other really popular crafting artists, then you have already heard about Imperial Bead and Trim. Now, this was my first time making a trip down there because usually I get stuff locally from the flea market pretty reasonably. So I thought, hey, why not? I've got one of my bridesmaids with me. We'll make a trip down there and we'll We'll, we'll look to get some of the stuff that I need to complete some of these projects. This I actually am probably not going to use for this, but I just wanted to show it to you anyway because I really love it. This is more of a metal type fabric, so it's not the typical uh, sticky back that you would get from, say, a Hobby Lobby, but it is sort of similar. I really like it because it sparkles under the sun and under the light crazy crazy so I just wanted to show you that this whole roll was 55 bucks probably a little more expensive than I should have spent um, because I think I have seen this at the flea market as well as on eBay so check that out all right so now I got these brooches you've seen similar at Hobby Lobby and they are more expensive at Hobby Lobby so this was actually a really good deal down there you have seen this brooch I've gotten this brooch actually at the flea market in a packet of like six of them and I've only spent like seven dollars so this was not necessarily very reasonable this brooch is pretty much everywhere I've even gotten it on eBay in a variety pack so you know it wasn't necessarily worth the trip financially for me but since we were down there we just went ahead and got the stuff that I need for this project but I just wanted to share my experience because I know people rave and rave and rave and you know I my experience down there I just got to be honest and I'll shut up First of all, unfortunately, in some of the stores, we experienced a little bit of prejudice. Not at Imperial Bead and Trim. I will give them that. They were very courteous, very kind. The only thing I didn't like is there was a disparity between when I talked to the owner about the price of a certain trim and when I talked to some of the associates. So you really want to be careful with that and make sure that they're not getting over on you. Sometimes you can negotiate. Sometimes you can't. So you may want to walk around and look in some other stores before you buy. But for my first time at Imperial Trim and Beads, I would definitely definitely go back mainly for some of the bodice things that they have for dresses and bridal gown beading which is another thing that I do so you know for stuff like this maybe not but definitely for some of the other stuff that they had going on so we're going to put these vases together very quickly and show you what I did these are going to sit on top of that bridge style chandelier I will link the video back to that so you'll know exactly what I'm using this particular project for we're gonna get started alrighty Oh my gosh, I lied, I forgot one, so I had to come back and show you this. So I also got this particular trim at Imperial Trim and Bead. You can see that it's not flat back, 
but that's okay. You've seen me use trim like this for some of my other projects. The trim that I got, I got on eBay and it was flat back. It wasn't quite like this, but this will still work for this particular project. Uh, let me take this out. Now this was $4 per yard, which might be a little pricey. I get my trim in about 10 yards from eBay and I spent, I want to say, Mm, under 20 bucks. I think it was like 11. So eBay is the best bet for something like this. But if you want it in like, you know, more than double, it does go up. So you can get a whole sheet of like a row of 24. And I think that whole sheet was like 200 bucks and it was 10 yards. So if you really need this trim and you need a lot of it, that might be your best bet. Before cutting it like this into two strand, I'd probably recommend eBay, but I ended up getting seven yards and it was just, you know, 20 bucks. So that wasn't bad. I can't complain. Um, I'm definitely gonna be using this a lot more for some of the other projects that I have to finish. So I just wanted to come back and show you that. All right, now we're really gonna get started. When I tell you that this is a super easy project, I tell you no lies. I'm showing you that the back of that rhinestone trim is not flat. What I'm doing is taking my E6000 and I'm running it along the back side of that. And then I'm going to lay that along the glass. Now you could do this on the glass. However, I'm not great with straight lines with glue on the glass or making a perfect uh, circle around a circular object. So I am putting the glue on the back of the rhinestone trim and then I'm going to lay that and you know just run it around the glass and pull it and stretch it. Now the back of this particular trim is not flat so things are going to slide a little more than they would with the flat back. As you can see as I release that you see how it slid right there? That's what I'm talking about. So you definitely have to hold it up. You definitely have to push it and don't worry E6000 can be cleaned up off of glass even after it dries with a little bit of Windex. The second time around I got smart and decided to start out with some hot glue. Secure it first which is what I should have done the first time. Don't ask me why I didn't. Then I'm going to use the E6000 and run it around that glass just underneath that first row and I'm going to create three strands before I put on that brooch because I want a thick sort of belt look. Okay, sorry this is a little bit out of frame. Forgive me for that. I didn't realize how high up I was holding the vase or how low the camera was. So you see me just holding that because you definitely want to hold it until it secures and dries. You see that it is going to move a little bit until that E6000 is completely dry. I didn't show you me taking off the backing of this brooch, but I did do that. You'll see it in just a moment on another brooch, but I'm just running my hot glue along the back of that. And I'm going to lay this right on top of the rhinestone trim where you can see where I, where I have the opening, where I drew the rhinestones together. So I just want to cover that work with the brooch. Now this is the second version that I'm doing. So you see me starting over. This is where I'm using the pearl brooch. And again, you saw me secure that rhinestone trim with the hot glue first. And now I'm running the E6000 this time along the back of the trim instead of along the glass just to keep things nice and neat and not so messy. So you kind of learn as you go. Um, I was a little tired doing this, so there's some things I knew. Then you see me securing that again with a little more hot glue. And you see me pinching that close to keep it as close as close as possible. Here's what I didn't show you before. This is me taking the pliers and making sure that I pull off the back of that so that these brooches lay straight against the rhinestone trim in the glass. You want to be careful not to pull things out of place. So you just need a gentle nudge, okay? You don't want to go crazy with the pliers. I pulled one of those pearls out of place. You will see that as I placed it there, there you see it. I did go back and fix it. And it is time for the final look. And this is how they came out. These came out so pretty. I love the sparkliness in them. I'll get some individual shots and post those as well. But I just wanted you to see kind of the different ways in which I did it. You know, you can see there, I put that one a little bit higher and those two a little bit lower just to make like a three piece set for later because I can sell these as a two or three or even a four or five piece set. So you see that one where I decided to run that trim up and down or vertically, I should say, and put the brooch that way. The first one you saw, I turned the brooch to the side but look at that, look at that. I wish it was a little bit more sunny out here so you could really see it. But I tell you all the time that as you're creating these things, you know, think about where you can take them. Think about how much more 
you can do. There it is where I turn the brooch to the side. Think about how much more you can do with this. I mean, this is a business in and of itself. You could really create some amazing pieces and sell it on your Etsy store or sell it on your website and create something for brides like me who are just over the top and who really love bling. These, again, are going to be up around the altar on top of that bridge style chandelier. I told you that I would link this video back to that so you can kind of get a, some sense of that. There's going to be a, a low flower arrangement around that uh, bridge style chandelier. And then these, these are going to have pearls and floating candles in them. And they will sit on top of that just above the flower arrangements with those floating candles lit. So that's really, really going to be pretty. And I'm just about giving everything my own touch. Even if you don't do this to sell, it's okay to totally give your day your own touch. Take the time that you need to take to make it special. We had a lot of family crisis and financial crisis, so we weren't able to have our wedding when we wanted to. But you turn lemons into lemonade and you make it that much more fabulous. And that's what I'm doing. And this was really, really fun. So that trip to LA to get these trims and brooches was really worth it. Again, as I said in the beginning, I think you would do better at your flea market. I'll slow down because I don't want to make you dizzy. But I think you could do better at your flea market you know, finding these brooches and finding these trims. I think sometimes when you go down to Fashion Alley in LA, you know, sometimes depending on the day, you can get a better deal than you can on other days. You know, I noticed that um, it wasn't the greatest experience. As I said, we did deal with a little bit of prejudice, prejudice, excuse me, from a couple of stores, but that's life. I'm used to it. It is what it is. I spoke to it, addressed it, moved on peacefully, and that's what matters most. But ultimately, it's about getting done what you want to get done and creating something that makes your day special. Wherever you source the materials from, it's just about giving it your touch. And I think every bride should have that. I'm looking forward to selling some of these, renting these out, you know, making other events very special. So that's what I'm all about. I'm going to give you some stills in just a minute, but I just want to say thank you for joining me because you could be looking at anybody else and you guys are such an encouragement. You are a blessing and I appreciate every follower, every viewer, every kind and encouraging word, even your tips and even those who give me a thumbs down. You know, it's, it's listen, everybody's not going to like everything and it challenges me to create and think better about what I'm doing. As I always say, the work of your hands are blessed. And you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So until next project, be blessed and stay, stay tuned, excuse me, for a couple of the still shots. I love y'all.